Yeah. Kendra Goble texted me and said, uh... That is so cool. How old is that one? Okay. When you say found, like somebody found them on shore? Mm -hmm. Somewhere? Found them in a parking lot. These two here, you want to just run west, or do you want to run over to those other marks? Uh, if you want to run over here, that's fine, we'll go to that one. Let's, yeah, go, let's go hit this that. one. Yeah. Okay. So... Where do you go, Bruce? Alright, little guy. You ready? He's thinking about it, he's still in kind of like.
I'm Officer Bruce King with the Sarasota Police Department with the Marine Unit, and I'm here to tell you about the great day we had as we partnership, partnered up with uh, Moat Marine Laboratories to release two sea turtles uh, back into the environment. Uh, yesterday I was asked about why, why would the police department uh, partner up and, and help a scientific education-based nonprofit. Um, it's an obvious answer to me. Um, the, from the turtles' point of view, humans have impacted the environment, whether it be through oil, oil leaks or habitat destruction or um, just development. And uh, it's the scientists and educators that, that have educated us and brought about better practices to save the turtles. So from the turtle point of view, it's obvious. From uh, the police department point of view, um, I, I believe I developed a couple friends yesterday that, that are resources out there on the water. They're going to contact me if they see a problem. And problems are always better solved in the early stages. Um, and honestly, from my point of view, a little bit selfish, but it, what a neat thing we did today to um, find, find the habitat out on the water, release the turtles, and, and to see the turtles swim towards the weed line. I got to tell you, it gives you a good feeling. These are these were just two turtles that we released yesterday. I will tell you that Holly West and the other scientists at, at Moat Marine Laboratories have released hundreds, if not thousands, of turtles. So they're they're definitely making an impact, and um, it, it was a good feeling, like I said, to see it swim off to the the sargassum weed and um, feel like you actually made a little bit of a difference. Uh, well, like I said earlier, having the friends on the water it, it's critical for me. Um, to have another set of eyes and ears out there to tell me what's going on. Um, and like you said, when I stumble across something and I need help, I have a direct contact. I have somebody I can call that's going to tell me uh, who I need to reach out to. My name is Holly West and I'm the Sea Turtle Care Coordinator here at Moat Marine Laboratory. So we've had roughly 2,600 patients come through our Hatchling Hospital this year and these were the last two that were in our critical care ward. We had one that came from a depredation here on our Sarasota beaches. So a depredation is when a predator will dig up a nest um, and this one had very severe injuries so we had to treat those injuries. So He was also on a course of antibiotics as well. So when he was completely healthy, he was ready to be released. Um, and then the other hatchling was from a disorientation. So he was actually found in a parking lot. He'd been in the water, but somehow found his way back up into a parking lot. And so we did a full range of diagnostics on him, to see if he was nice and healthy, and then he was ready to be released. Yeah, we want to try and get um, all of our hatchling re hatchlings released as soon as possible before the water temperatures start to drop for winter. So these were the last two, and it was great that we could get them out so fast. Well, we're always trying to find um, anybody that can help us out. Um, it's a big task. Any hatchling that goes into the water, we can't release on the beach anymore. What a hatchling does when it get, enters the water is it goes through a swim frenzy. So it uses all that energy from the yolk that it's absorbed while it was in the egg. Um, and it uses all that energy to try and get as far away from the shore as possible and away from all the predators. So if they do that swim frenzy when they're here with us, um, we can't release them on the beach anymore. So we have to take them offshore and try and find the weed line. So the weed line can be anywhere from 20 to 100 miles offshore. So it's a really big undertaking to get them out offshore. So it's it's a little hard to sometimes to find somebody to get the time and the boat captain to be able to take us out there. But um, lucky for us, Sarasota police, police Department came to our rescue at the very end of the season to get our last two little hatchlings back out into the wild. I, having them here to support us is great and be able to have that relationship with them. So then even if they see anything while they're out there in the water too, they're helping to advise us on what's going on out there um, and keep in touch with us so we can both work together to help these endangered species. Only one out of a thousand hatchlings survives to reach adulthood. So we think that every little one counts. So. It's, it's crazy seeing, um, seeing guys sometimes react to our little hatchlings. They're a lot smaller than you actually think they're going to be when you get up nice and close to them. So um, it's a way I win people over a lot of times is it with my little hatchlings. They are awful cute and so um, they handled them great. Yeah, everything was great. So when they went out there, what they're doing is looking for a weed line or the sargassum weed that you find out offshore where the currents converge. We want to drop the hatchlings off in the weed line so they have some cover. Uh, that's where they start to eat and feed. So they want to feed on all the little particles that they can find out there. Um, and they also want the cover and protection of that seaweed that they can find. So, um, so we drop them off out in the weed line and they, they both went straight for it. One of them hesitated a little, but they both ended up swimming off into the weed line there. Um, where they're nice and protected and happy. So we're wrapping up for the season. We only have a couple of nests left on our beaches. We monitor the beaches from Longboat Key down to Venice. 
Um, and any ha if you do find a hatchling that's lost or a straggler out there, uh, we recommend that people contact our stranding hotline. Give them a call and they'll come down and pick them up for you. Um, so each hatchling season, we have, in the past we've had a estimate of about 12 to 1500 come through. This was a record year for us having over 2600 hatchlings come through our hatchling hospital for varying reasons. So like I said, uh, depredated nests or disorientations are, seems to be our most common uh, hatchling injuries that come through. Uh, luckily enough, we now have a large viewing window that people can look through to see. Most of our stuff goes on behind the scenes. So now thanks to a gener generous donation from the Kukanza family, uh, visitors here can see our hatchlings getting weighed and measured and stuff like that. So generally hatchling season is anywhere from May through October.